This so. would be a joint. This is a lower lower third, right? So we're going to say that's up a little further. Okay, so we're going to say it's mid. So it's right in here somewhere. The arm kind of comes up just a tiny little bit. There's some obvious deformity to it. Okay, so he walks into me. I'm kind of hanging out in my first day room. Uh, and he says, oh my god, Dave, look, I broke my arm. I said, well, what happened? Okay, and he says he's working on a vehicle, and it dropped on him, boom, hit him right in the middle of the arm. They lifted it up. He came in to see us. He's not looking pale. He's not anxious. He's talking to me fine. There's no problems. Okay, the site is safe. Nobody else back there is injured. So come on here, grab a seat. And we're going to give you a little, just switch arms from the same So we do a little immediate support there. And I come over here, and I wash my hands, and I throw my gloves on. Okay, and as I'm doing this, I'm taking a look at that, and I'm saying that is totally a medical aid situation. Right? I can't deal with that just by myself. So because of medical aid, I'm going to do some vitals. Come on, gloves. So I grab my vitals, and I fill all this stuff in. We ask him the questions, and we get to our head to toe. If it's localized, so I'm going to check your arm. I'm going to let me know if there's any pain at all. Now I'm going to start right up here. Okay? I'm going to check out the clavicle and the shoulder blades, and then I really want to check out that shoulder, make sure there's no problems at all in here, and then making sure that there's no problems in the humerus, and getting down into the elbow, making sure there's no problems in here, wherever we can get to, and now we start to come down to the injury site, and I gently palpate down here, and we see this is where it's obviously angulated, so I go, all right, fair enough, I don't need to you know, grab and squeeze this. So I come down, and I'm just going to check and see if we have circulation past it, and we do, okay? And I'm going to check out the hand, make sure there's no other problems in here, and no problems at all there. So I'm going to grab this one, and I'm going to check out pulse, and pulse and both are present, okay? And then I'm going to check out the hands, and make sure that our color comparison is okay, okay? So, so far we've done our head to toe, our pulse. Uh, on both compared the two. I want to see if he's got motor and sensory. So I kind of hold the hand as if it's really your fingers in front. Good. And I just want you to look over that way. I'm going to pinch one of your fingers and tell me which way it is. Okay, good. So now pulse motor sensory comparison is all good. Okay. And we're sitting here saying, all right, so what we've got is a fractured arm. Uh, and so we're going to split them up and get them back out of here. Okay. Questions so far? You said you did your first set of vitals right after that because you filled it. I did. All actually, the important stuff? I totally filled okay. all that in. Yeah. Okay. All right, so now we come down and we do treatment, which is CBIS. So we've got clean bandage, ice splint, sling, spica, spine board, all that stuff. Uh, nothing to clean, nothing to bandage. How about ice? Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. So we grab some ice, especially because I'm about to build a splint. That's going to take me a couple of seconds. So now we can throw this right on here. Okay, so ice is on. Now we're into splints. Okay, so now the splint in this one is a little bit different. Because the splint in the past, we just had fractured hand, and so we went to the elbow. We want to immobilize fully the joint above the injury. Meaning that if I fracture down here, this joint needs to be totally immobilized, so it goes to my elbow. If I fracture here, this joint needs to be totally immobilized, so I go to the armpit. Okay, question? Clint. Okay, you got some ice, how about some O2? Uh, O2, yeah, sure, we could do that, except there's no, not pale, not cool, right. maybe for pains. To, yeah, you know, because you're going to take a few minutes sure. to build the split. Yeah. Okay. And you know what, if he was pale and cool, how would this one be amended? We'd upgrade this to RTC. Uh, pale, cool, and drama. Okay, but is it an area of the body that holds blood? Ah, right. Okay. So give me a, what do you think? He's pale and anxious when he walks in, how do I change what I've done? You put him on the right. ground first. Lay down, oxygen, and what's the big one? Oh, primary, right? I modified all that, right? We just sat him down because he's fine, right? He's hurt his arm. So there's no other concerns with him. I would have modified, I would have done my full primary, right? counting, pulse breathing, all that sort of stuff. Okay? All right, so what we're gonna do now is, uh, one stance one might work, two is gonna be better. Uh, I wanna use this arm here, but I can't measure off of this one because, well, we're gonna aggravate it by lifting it up. So, go over to this one. And so we're going to have this, just going to sit there. I'm going to go right to the armpit. You just want to straighten your arm out for me. Okay, so I'm going to bring it right about here. So all I'm doing right now is I'm taking my thumb and I'm placing it right where his elbow was so that I can then go like that. Okay? And then I'm just going to check it to make sure that works. 
perfect. And then we come out past the fingertips. And this is going to go to this arm, so I want this to go this way. Okay, and then we camber it for the appropriate arm. Okay, we regularly see people camber it over here and then mess up on the side. Okay, so there. Camber, camber, camber. Now with this one, because that picture I've shown you shows that there's, you know, it's a little bit off, it's not in perfect alignment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit more padding on, just so that it's a little bit more comfortable. next piece of this is I'm about to strap this up to the arm, but again with the hand, the hand is never totally flat so we want to have a little bit under here. So I'm going to take the ice off so I can see what I'm doing and then my one lift here is going to be he's going to support the arm. We're going to lift it up, we slide it into there, make sure this is where it needs to be, fantastic. I never press down on the injury of course. And again, grab our wrap. And then we start again. So all of this is off. We've taken off any clothing underneath where our bandage will go. You want to take off like jewelry watches? Yes, good point. Okay, so all uh, jewelry watches, bracelets, rings, all that stuff. If we can get that off, we want to. Yeah, and then you want to wrap this so it's snug, but nothing crazy. Okay, and so we come up to our injury site here. We maybe loosen up just a little bit because we don't want to pull down on that. Okay, again, this watch should be off. Let's do this and see if I can pick up. I think he's going to hold that on there for me. Perfect. Maybe a grab. Maybe we can do one more wrap on here. Now with this injury, because with the other one that we've done so far, we had a fracture of fingers. If I leave it so I could just see those, so I would cut this. That way I could assess circulation in two, two different areas. You said you would cut that, but could you just cut a few more wraps on it? In the field, just, I would like, true enough, I would do a few more wraps in case. A little more secure reason. You're not leaving space so you can get a radio. Okay. All right, so now we've got here, we've got this wrapped up. I've now added something to the arm, so I want to check some things out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk my fingers in and check the pulse. Radio pulse is present. Bring these ones over again, make sure the color of the fingers are acceptable. And so our splint is now on, this is now wrapped, and now what we would do is this comes over, we would do our big arm sling, and then bind it to the body or transverse it. In case we've already done that. Does that make sense? Would you put this guy in a cab? Uh, yes. Actually, and I'll show the uh, the slings again just because it was a few days ago that we did it the last time. Well, he just sticks to the different sling. Okay, so I'm just going to move this out of the way so we've got space bring this down. It's a small point to the joint. Yep. And then first side over. Or first side over the arm. Yes. Okay. And so now what we do is we grab hold of this and we pull it so that he feels comfortable with it. And you can tighten or loosen that. He's got a collar so I don't need to worry about the padding on the back of the neck. Tie this. This one here is an acceptable slip knot so I can tighten it up later. And then we're going to do our transverse or a binder bandage across. So 
last side. And I'm just going to check to make sure that's still broad all over the place. We can slide our ice into here. Put on the shirt. Okay, under the injury. Take another set of vitals. ETV uh, or taxi cab or company vehicle. Can he be on his own cab? Some bunch of the questions are 